Hello everyone and welcome back, Dom here and on this video I'm going to show you how to create a massive hybrid multi-layered snare in Backbone and we're going to start with a simple acoustic snare sample. Let's do this. So for this example I'm going to use an acoustic snare as my starting point, let's listen to it. And we're going to try and make this a little bit more interesting. We're going to give it a lot of oomph and a lot of punch and create a hybrid snare with lots of layers. So let's bring it into Backbone. There we go. And let's play it. Very nice. Now, what I want to do is I want to decompose it because still I want to see what I can do just with this sample before starting adding more layers to it. So for this, I'm going to go to my decompose and click pre-listen. And now what I can do is I can check my tonal element. Let's see what we have here. Okay, we need to do a little bit of tweaking for this sample. So let's try and isolate the tonal element. So I'm going to go a little bit like that. Let's try some settings. I'm going to use my cutoff so I can get rid of all these top end artifacts. Now with these settings, my tonal element is quite clean. Let's listen to it. Very nice. Now let's listen to the noise element. Nice. So tonal, noise. Let's apply this. So here we go. Here we have our two layers. First of all, let me go ahead and, you know, reduce the length of these layers. So this is just silence. Let's try and trim it a little bit. Let's listen to this in isolation. I need to do a little bit of fade out here. Good. And let's listen to the noise element. Very nice. And now I'm ready to go ahead and tweak this sample. Let's go to our tonal element. And what I'm going to do straight away is I'm going to add a little bit of punch with the pitch envelope. So in order to find our pitch envelope, we need to go to our pitch page. There we go. And now I'm going to bring on my waveform so we can see what we're doing. And let's see, let's zoom in actually. Very nice. Now I have a very nice representation of my waveform. And let's isolate the tonal element. Now I can add a little bit of pitch envelope. Very nice. See how much punch I can add to this? Very, very nice. Now what I want to do is I want to go crazy with the subs on this snare. It sounds really nice, but I think it lacks a little bit of low end. Let's listen to the original sample. Yeah, it's nice, but for this hybrid snare that I have in mind, we can get some really nice subs. So in order to do this, we have a very cool filter section in Backbone that has a wide variety of filters. Now on most drum machines, you'll be lucky if you have a low pass, high pass, and maybe a bad pass filter. But here we have all these different filter types and they sound really, really good. Let me show you a very quick example of how you can use the filters in Backbone to get really, really big sounds and huge low end. So in this case, I'm going to use a high pass filter, a 24 dB one. And as you can see, the waveform disappears. Why? Because right now my filter is all the way up to 22K. So basically it's a high pass filter. Everything is gone. So when I start lowering the frequency, you will see that I'm going to get back my waveform. And this updates in real time. I love this because I can see exactly what I'm doing when I'm doing sound design for my drums. So let's go ahead and before I do this, I'm going to deactivate it for a second. Let's see where our fundamental is in the Cubase analyzer. It's around, let's see, it's around 200, 206 Hertz. So let's go to our filter. And what I like to do is just bring it to the fundamental first. And now let's add a little bit of resonance. See, this enhances the fundamental, but check what I can do. I can go half this frequency. So in this case, I know it's 206. Let's go 103. And now let's see how this sounds. So now we get a nice low end frequency right there. So. I'm going to make this even more pronounced with the filter envelope. To be honest with you, what I want to do is I want to have it only at the very beginning. So I'm going to auto scale and I'm going to adjust 
my filter envelope. And as you can see, the waveform updates in real time. How cool is that? Okay, so let's see how it sounds. That's nice. Very nice. So more resonance. I think that's enough. Let's listen without the filter for a second. Hear that? Beautiful. Now I'm happy. Now we have a very nice beefy tonal element. And let's go to this noise element here. And maybe I want to take control of this noise element to make it sound maybe a little bit more electronic. We're going for a hybrid snare, so a little bit of acoustic, a little bit of electronic. Let's turn on the recent for this one. So now let's use the auto gain and check what happens. This is without the auto gain. And now if I use the auto gain, it changes the character of this noise element dramatically. And this is a great sound design tool. And this allows you, of course, to compensate for loudness when you click on different parts of the spectrum, because this is, of course, louder than this one. But in this case, I'm going to take advantage of this and make this noise element super long. And of course, I can even change the speed. And I can change the acceleration. And I can even change the format. So let's see what we have up to this point. Let's listen to the original snare. So even without adding any other layers, just from that acoustic snare, I have a hybrid snare sound. This sounds a little bit electronic. It has a little bit of acoustic hint to this, but listen to this. Beautiful. Now, of course, with Backbone, we have a comprehensive library of sounds, of layers. So let's go to Load. And here I'm going to go to Layers. And let's find some more elements to complement this sound. Let's find some more layers. And I'm going to look for snare drums. And what you will find in Backbone is that in the Layers library, we have both noise and tonal elements for our snares, our kick drums, all these things. So it's very easy to layer sounds together. So in this case, I'm going to go and look for a tonal element first to complement the sound. Maybe this one will work very nicely. Let's drag it into another layer. Let's see without. Let's go into our overview page. Let's go and change the level of this. Yes, let's see if it works with the other tonal element that we have. So the first one, and now with the new tonal element. Now, what I want to do in this case, I want to make sure that these two match in terms of pitch. So I'm going to start tweaking my pitch right here. Very nice. So we don't have any clashing there with the low frequencies. Now, let's see how this sounds. Great. Now, what if we go and add a snare top end? Let's find a noise element. So what I'm looking for right now is because we made the original noise a little bit long, maybe we lost a little bit of the snap. So I'm going to try and find a nice noise element. This is pretty nice. This transit might be useful. Let's drag it in. That's nice. Now we have a nice snappy attack. Let's try and mute it and see if it makes a difference. See, it adds this click at the very beginning. And why not go and add this one as well? Let's raise the volume a little bit. Great. Now, of course, I can mix all these layers exactly where I want them. And the great thing is because the noise layers are already decomposed. It means that we won't have any clashing with the low frequencies and all these things. That's the most tricky part to get right when you're layering drums. I'm going to add one more layer and this one is going to be a clap. I'm going to go to percussion, go to claps, and I'm going to add a clap. I like this one. This is nice and big. Let's go and add it. And now let's go ahead and mix a little bit. I want to make this clap louder for sure. 
wide and mix a little bit. And maybe, you know what, I'm going to go to my wrist synth for my noise and make it a little bit faster. And maybe change the acceleration a little bit. And the great thing is, the acceleration can be a great tool depending on the tempo of your track. So if you have a very slow track and you want like a really long snare, you go with slow acceleration, you know, to cover all these spaces between the kick drum and the snare, or you might have a faster track, just go with higher acceleration. Perfect. Now I'm going to do the final tweaks. What I want to do is I want to make this snare really dynamic. And in order to do that, I'm going to make some of the layers velocity sensitive. Let me show you. I'm going to make this noise element velocity sensitive. So let's go here and we're going to turn velocity all the way up. Same with the tonal. It's already there. Transient. Yes. Tiny bit. This noise as well. And, and this is already velocity sensitive. So now I have a very, very dynamic hybrid multi-layered snare. So I can do build-ups with it, I can do breaks, check it out. It's completely dynamic and it all started from one sample. And of course I use six layers here. I barely feel the need to go ever over four layers, but now, let's go and add a little bit of reverb to finish off this snare. I'm going to go here, and now I also have the option to send some of the elements to the reverb, and some of them not to send them to the reverb. So I'm going to go ahead and add a reverb, and let's make this super massive, okay? That sounds good, but maybe I don't want some of the elements to go to the reverb. For example, in this case, this element right here, it's very low, maybe I don't want it to go to the reverb, I can just send it to direct out. And now I have an even cleaner, more defined sound. Check out the difference. This goes to the reverb now. And now without it going to the reverb. This sounds nice, it has tons of low end, but it will clutter my mix, so I'm going to send it to direct out. And of course, I can play it at every pitch. And it goes without saying that if you want any layer not to follow your keys and the pitch, you can do this very easily. You go to noise element and you pull key follow all the way down. Same with this one. Let's do it for... So now I can play my tonal elements on every key but the noise elements will remain the same. So this gives me an incredible amount of flexibility. Check it out. <laughs> and it's still extremely dynamic. So there you go. Just a quick reminder, we started with this sample and we ended up with this. And it goes without saying that if you want to tweak your sound even more and go crazy, you can go into any of these layers, go into the filter section and activate a distortion. For example, in this case, I'm going to add a tube drive and I can go crazy, same with this one. And of course I went a little bit over the top with this one, but I wanted to show you all the possibilities that we have in Backbone. Now when you're done and you're ready, you have your custom, unique, special sample that you can drag from here and drop it into your DAW. And of course this way you can start creating your own library of sounds. So there you go, guys. This is how you can create a hybrid, multi-layered snare with Backbone. Of course, all these techniques that I showed you, you can apply to kick drums, toms, cymbals, whatever you want, any kind of percussion. Backbone has all the tools you need to create your own custom drum sounds. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next one.